Hello everyone! Thank you so much for watching today. It's good to be back. I mean, to you, I just missed a Saturday video, but in my world, we had a stomach virus going throughout the entire house. I went down on Friday. Fortunately, it didn't keep me down for long, but man, that was rough. It's really hard when everybody gets everything. But today, as I shoot this, it is Valentine's Day. So, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy belated Valentine's Day by the time this goes up. And the topic is this new brand at Walmart. Now my Walmart store um, in the cosmetics area, they've completely reconfigured things. They've got different brands are in different places. They've made room for a line called Relove by Revolution. So Makeup Revolution. They have this sub line and everything is under $5. And actually, what was that exact price? Everything but one product that I'm going to use today clocks in at $2.98. Seriously, I'm looking at my purchase history. I'm seeing my entire list of things. $2.98 for everything. The foundation is $4.98. In an era when the prices at the drugstore keep going up and up, I think this is extremely noteworthy to see this line come out. And to talk about the footprint that it's taking up in my Walmart store, it may be even a little bit bigger than the Milani section. Like, it's substantial. Lots of things configured in this sort of mini palette design. Um, these are a little bigger than like an e.l.f. bite size palette. But $2.98 for all these items, I can pretty much do a full face with it. And and is everything a hit? I would say no. This is not a first impressions video. While I was out of the game for a day having the stomach virus for the rest of the weekend, I've been playing and testing this stuff. Not everything is a hit, but there are a lot of things that you should probably know about. Thank you all for the heads up that you were starting to see this in your stores. Thank you for the questions about it. It's definitely up my alley. It seems kind of like a rebirth of an elf type situation here, just because the items are truly an affordable price point and it seems as though it's here to stay. This isn't just a special limit limited edition end cap. This is an actual section set up in my store. You can find the items on Walmart's website, and if you look up a Relove by Revolution, you can see it through Revolution's website too. Don't you think they need to stick in like a mini size, travel size, Emily Edit, uh, wants and needs palette in this line? And guys, I've been drinking water and body armor so much, this is actually my first morning getting back to coffee. Mm. My first sip in days. They did have primers and setting sprays. When I first made my purchase, like I hadn't seen the stuff in my store yet. I saw it on the website and did like a delivery order. But then at a later time I was there and I saw they do have primers, they do have setting sprays. But we're gonna jump in with one of the two foundation options they have. They have another like matte foundation and then I'm using the Super Serum Hyaluronic Acid Foundation in the shade F4. So my thought was maybe this is gonna be like a little cheaper alternative alternative to L'Oreal's little Rockstar Dropper Foundation, and this was the one thing that was $4.98, and then everything else is going to be $2.98. Is this the same? This actually gives really good coverage. It has a dropper that Shocker, it works. I would say it's honestly similar, but it doesn't have quite as good of staying power on my skin as the L'Oreal does. This is thin, you can see that drop that I put on my forehead's kind of running down my face. I kind of take my brush and let it all stamp around a bit and then start blending it in and it has for sure medium coverage. I wouldn't even call it light to medium, I'd call it medium. So in that way, it kind of reminds me of the L'Oreal because that one really delivered on the coverage too. This one I think appears a bit more glowy and just as the day rolls on, I feel like I can see my pores a little more with this. I can see skin texture just a little more, whereas the other one, is just this really, I think, perfecting veil over the skin. Like, I think it's worth it to get the L'Oreal, but this ain't bad. And for under five bucks, it's honestly kind of impressive. As I get this all blended in here, you can see it has a really pretty finish. It's definitely covering some stuff up. It might be worth trying. We all have different skin, okay, underneath it all. And you may absolutely love this. I might try it with some different, like, maybe pore filling primer type stuff, and maybe I'll like the staying power a little better. But the staying power is really the only concern, because I think it looks radiant and beautiful when I get it all blended all over. And the coverage, again, actually 
pretty nice. It's making me think like Neutrogena Healthy Skin, really, really similar to that radiant end result that's not off the charts, that's not like, oh, I'm seeing glitter on my skin, but just very healthy. We need to be looking healthy these days, right? So get that all on. And then as far as a concealer goes, they have little conceal and contour palettes. Um, and by the way, there are things that I didn't get also. Like the range is pretty big. I got the things that would create a full face, the things that immediately interested me, but there's like, you know, a few other lip products, a few other kinds of things. I'm one face, so this isn't absolutely everything you can possibly get from this brand. But I got this in the shade Light, this concealer and contour palette. So these are all creams here. We have a couple of larger shades up top and then kind of like a range of depths. I'm gonna use this as my concealer, as my cream contour. I'm gonna first go into this shade here, which is kind of nice and brightening. And the verdict on this is that it's an okay product. It's actually, I think, pretty good from the concealer standpoint. I don't love the tones here in what would be used as contour on my skin just because they're very, very warm. They're not unusable. They don't end up looking ridiculous, but they're not maybe what's best for my skin tone, you know what I'm saying? Um, you'll see once we get it all blended in, but let's focus on the concealer part first. Um, I can also go into these shades here. I can go into this one if I want to. You know, we're just just dabbing around and then we'll blend it in. Consistency is not overly greasy. Um, you don't put your finger in it and feel like, ooh, that's like an oil slick kind of vibe. It's a thick enough cream. It doesn't end up looking cakey and dry on the skin, but definitely not one of those where you're like, ooh, it's just so thin and greasy. I'm just gonna go back to my e.l.f. brush now and begin working this around. Hope you all have a great Valentine's Day or had a great Valentine's Day by the time this goes up. When Bob and I were trying to make a plan, we were like, uh, I don't even know what we can plan on because we were talking about it over the weekend and we had like three out of five people sick at that point or four out of five. And it's like, uh, let's just go by the seat of our pants and have a date another time. I believe the phrase is fly by the seat of your pants. Okay, so see how this is blending with ease. You know, it, that should give you a sense of how this isn't an incredibly stiff cream, but it's stiff enough to really have some coverage, I feel like, see? We can't be too mad at the way that went over things. And you can build it, you know, I mainly worked with this, but maybe I could be like, oh, I wanna see what some of that would be like, like over the deepest little part here. Let's try. I don't recall seeing like a doe foot applicator concealer, but I could be wrong. Correct me in the comments if you saw like a freestanding non palette style concealer there. But yeah, here's that concealer palette all blended in and I can't really complain. It did cover, it did do the job, you know? We will come back to that and do a little cream contour as well. First though, I have a powder to set the under eye with. I first ordered the translucent and they had to replace it with the beige, which is a decent shade for like all over my face. But then I went back to the store in person and I found the translucent. So um, today is actually gonna be my first day setting my under eye with this. I have just been subbing in um, like Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder. Now accompanying this, they have a very like skinny, smaller section of actual just revolution makeup. And you're gonna see like some loose powders and maybe a few eyeshadow things, things that go outside of this $5 range, all right? Things that are not the Relove brand. But I'm sticking with this for this video. We're gonna try this translucent powder. It does feel like same consistency as the other powder I'd been using. It's very soft. It's definitely not as firm as a Rimmel Stay Matte, so I think we're gonna wanna, you know, watch the application a little bit maybe, but I am still applying it with a triangle sponge. So we're going in, getting it all up on this under eye zone, hitting the T zone with it. This shade of this powder is the one thing that's new to me, but I do like the texture of the powders. It feels a lot like L'Oreal True Match actually. And the other shade, the beige, is definitely good for my all over skin tone. I didn't get a real excess of product on here, but I'm gonna sweep over it just in case. This combo, this over this, 
under eyes are looking a little heavier than when I used Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Loose Powder. Just take that as a heads up. Or if I would have used Rimmel Stay Matte, it would have been lighter looking. Maybe this benefits from the lighter hand, but like I definitely see a difference using this versus the Photo Focus Translucent to set that concealer. And the powder does say non-comedogenic with pink clay and niacinamide. I'm gonna put a little bit of the beige just lightly all over the rest of my skin to set. Okay, taking away some of the luminosity from the foundation, but all in all, like a good shade match, just a good basic pressed powder. But we are gonna come back to this since it claims concealer and contour. We're gonna come back to this, go to this deepest shade and work it around like our hairline. We're just gonna swipe it on with our finger. Um, there is like a second darkest shade. That seems even more orangey warm. We'll work with the lesser of two evils right now on that. You can do a little bit down here. Okay, then I'll take my Sephora 56. It's not that hard to blend in, so that's great. It's just, I would have preferred maybe a little bit cooler tone but we're gonna work with this. We also have another little powder contour palette and that will actually be the saving grace in terms of adjusting the tone of everything. See, it's not bad, I'm just trying to explain. Now that this side's set over here, it's kinda like being a little more resistant to the blend. The other contour thing looks like this, and I believe this was in multiple shades. I got the Baked Sugar shade of this Trio Contour Palette. It actually comes with a highlight. We have a fairly deep matte contour and a shimmery uh, bronzer type shade as well. And this kind of cools things down, adds a little more depth. Um, they're very pigmented. You don't need a lot on your brush, like just a little couple dabs will do ya. Um, I'm gonna put this around my hairline too. Immediately a little more realistic looking shade, I think. And the shimmery side is nice too. But this color is just a little more my comfort zone and really has a nice depth potential, could make a very good eyeshadow. And let's see, I may not use this particular highlighter today, but I will show you that it's perfectly good. It's not chunky. Um, reminds me a lot of the highlight type stuff that's in an e.l.f. little bite-sized face duo. Speaking of which, they got face duos that look like just a jumbo-sized e.l.f. bite-sized face duo. I got the one called Kindness, and it's a real like dusty rose shade here and a shimmer that's very champagne. We're gonna use that, but first we're gonna use I think one of my favorite little parts of this line, which is the Baby Tint Lip and Cheek. I have that in the shade called Blush, and this is actually really pretty on the lips and the cheeks. There's not an abundance of lip products, like they had some squeezy gel type glosses and some rollerball glosses. They had these, but not a lot of like flat out lipsticks or really opaque colorful lip products. But what I'm gonna do at this point is show you this on the cheeks. They call it a lip and cheek tint. Um, consistency is not like straight liquid. It's a little more creamy than that, but I feel like it looks really pretty. And you could use it as kind of a layering step, you know, put some of the powder blush on top, which we will do. But that's what that looks like on its own. And I think it's kind of nice. And here's what it looks like on the lips. It's like if the Benetint products had a creaminess factor instead of just being transparent. And some of them do have that, you know. Kind of buildable, it gives the lips a little color. I like it, and I really do like that shade. I think that's super workable for pretty much any look you wanna pull off. And see the color developing just a little bit. Um, when you look at the doe foot here, by the way, you can sense that there's some kind of staining because anytime your doe foot looks a little bit like hot pink, it doesn't necessarily mean that your product's gonna translate into hot pink eventually on your face, but it means there's a little color developing thing that can happen. And I can see that a little bit on the lips. It's getting rosier. But we're gonna do this powder blush duo here. This is totally good, guys. Like, every bit is pigmented as an e.l.f. bite-sized face duo. 
And no, I am not like affiliated with this line. I had no idea it was coming. <laughs> just because I at one point in time had a palette with Revolution, like I'm not in cahoots. I just discovered this like you all did. More than enough pigment in that shade. And then we're gonna go to this highlight which, like I said, gives a little bit of a champagne looking thing. Plenty pigmented here as well and no complaints about the way it's textured. You know, it's, it's not flaky, it's not too much, uh, it blends into the skin just fine. There's nothing to negatively critique this product about. It's a couple of nicely pigmented, nicely textured products for under three bucks. I'm digging that. So we've used quite a few products so far just on the complexion. Um, I again feel like the Super Serum is impressive. It has a beautiful look on the skin right after application. It has an impressive medium coverage and a really nice just like radiant healthy glow. The thing kind of setting it apart from the L'Oreal, I think it's slightly more radiant in its finish and slightly less good about being really long wear all day. That L'Oreal wears flawless on me all day long. This is not quite there. I'm not saying it's like breaking down and becoming invisible throughout the day, but it's just showing a little more texture, like the texture on my cheek, the texture around my nose, between my brows. It just shows itself a little more, okay? And like I said, maybe I can adjust that with different primers, but it's still, for under $5, I still think it's a pretty good product. I mean, I, I ask a lot of my foundations. I want to see them wearing well all day long, and some things need a little touch up, like this can definitely look fresher with just a little like powder touch up in some certain areas. These super matte powders, I would say a decent all over the face setting powder. Not the number one thing I'd want to be putting up on my under eye, but all over the skin it's all right. The blush duo, high marks there. The contour trio, I would give pretty high marks there as well. This concealer palette, I know this creamy concealer palette idea is probably not everyone's cup of tea, but if you're trying to stick within this range and you're looking for something under $3, um, it actually can totally work. Not my chosen contour shades in there, so it's kind of like a middle of the pack product for me for that reason. It's not the type of thing where every day in the future as I sit down to do my makeup, I'm gonna be just longing to use this one. You know what I mean? But absolutely impressed by the little baby tint. I think that's fun and I would try more shades of that for sure. So now I feel like we're coming into part two of this video, which is the eyes. And I got one of these blade brow skinny pencils. I think there was another brow pencil type option as well. I got it in the shade dark brown and it has the little spoolie on one end and they went for a small like a teeny tiny rectangle shape not sure if we're gonna focus or if you're just gonna have to trust me but there is a little rectangle it's super firm like I really have to apply some pressure to get some little marks down but it does appear to be a decent enough cool deep brown it actually to me once I get it going in my brows it seems a little lighter than I might want actually it's okay definitely workable I'm not sure how many shades they have in total available in this line in their blade brow. I don't notice a real profound difference from like, oh, it's a rectangle. It's performing just about like all those different little fine skinny brow pencils, okay? But maybe a little bit drier in consistency compared to say NYX Micro Brow or the L'Oreal or the e.l.f., which I've been using all of those a little bit more lately. But I got a nice, quick, decent fill in there, right? It's just always exciting, I think, to see a new brand set up shop in Walmart, even more so than like in an Ulta store, because Ulta, you kind of expect some things to come and go, but Walmart's like, you're coming into my Walmart. There's a slight bit more feeling of permanency when you see things show up at Walmart. It's not like the store is all about makeup and is constantly adjusting for new brands and this and that. Like there'll be a shift every so often. This is the biggest shift I've probably seen since I've been attending this Walmart <laughs> as far as the makeup section goes. They definitely moved some stuff around to make room for this range. But I think it's kind of a breath of fresh air to see things at this low price. With everything I've used, I haven't really dwelled on it a lot, but like, you know, yeah, I may have had a few critiques on the little concealer palette, but I didn't spend over three bucks on it, so. And did it conceal? Yes, it did. Okay, so I'm just brushing up through. I think I got a pretty decent brow going on there. I'm not positive if there's a brow gel, so I'm just gonna use what I got. NYX Control Freak. 
can handle that. I am also not positive whether or not they make an eyeshadow primer, so we're gonna use Milani there. And then they have some little eyeshadow palettes, which are again coming in at $2.98, and they are six color palettes, and a lot of what's available is pretty bright. Um, as I was placing my order online, like I just kept seeing bright option after bright option, um, and then seeing in store, I saw a couple of, well, they'd been compromised, but they, they had like, I think an all matte option and something a little more neutral. But these are the two that I ended up with. I have Manifest and I have Sincere. And so see how they've packaged these? It's a little bit bigger compact than an e.l.f. bite size. And then they just divided it up a little bit differently too, to where you're getting six shades as opposed to just four. But here's what's a little bit concerning. Most of the shades, every shade but one, in here, every shade except for that one is labeled as a pressed pigment on the back and it's got a little X over the eye area and a face. So it's saying that's maybe suitable for use on the face but not on the eye area. But I'm pretty sure everybody's seeing this and thinking that's an eyeshadow palette, right? And this one, uh, there are two shades marked that way, these two. So like these really strong pigmented shades, I guess are not recommended for eye use, but I definitely used them on my eyes. I, I don't think I had any problems. I didn't have any staining, but just know it's marked that way. The shades appear to be quite pigmented. Like there's a few of the colors from this side Wow. And I didn't have any trouble in the last look I used with this more pinky palette. Since it is Valentine's Day, this is the one I'm gonna use. You guys know I'm not going anywhere. I'll keep making videos. I'll keep doing videos on these little palettes. We have mattes in this palette here, here, and here. We're gonna go for the peachy shade and just start building that up in the crease. Ah, oh, feels good to be sitting here doing videos again. So this is cute. This is definitely showing. I can see that peachiness coming up. Part of me likes that they went so colorful. Part of me also wishes that maybe there were a few more neutral options, but I also kind of wonder if I was even seeing it all because sometimes when you're searching through the website, you're not quite getting the full picture. I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade now with that same brush. It's vibrant, very bubble gummy. Had to unload the memory card there, but in terms of what I'd like more of in this line, I'd like to see more substantial lip products that aren't just like a glaze or a tint or whatever. And maybe a few more eye palettes that are a little earthier, you know. Um, I'm going to take some of this shimmer right here and we're going to put that on the outer part of the lid. Can you see what's going on here? It's laying down fine with this little Persona double-ended brush. Okay, so there we are. We've got the crease all done. We've got that kind of like shimmery, berry looking color right there. And now we gotta use some of this too, right? I'm thinking of using my smudger type brush with that and working a little bit of that shade like into my crease as well. It's just gonna add a little more richness of pinky color. It's pretty. Okay, and then I'm just using my blender side to go over that edge. It's pretty colorful, right? Pretty colorful. Now I'm gonna go to this one, like the lighter pink, and see how that's really got a little more light catching ability. Almost has a little bit of goldeny quality to it too, but get that on the lid. I'm not quite sure how the bronze factors into everything here. That's the one shade that is okayed for eye use, gosh. That, you know, I may use this little Define side, go into some of the bronze, and we just use that as a little lower lash line. So I don't know that I want my eye to be fully encircled by pink. To swatch that shade, it just looks like this very classic bronze. I feel like it's not the kind of eye palette where I'm gonna be reaching for it constantly, but yet, therefore a very appropriately priced product for that type of thing. Like if you're thinking, oh, I need something with some blues in it. I'm only gonna use that a few times, so I don't wanna spend too much, but I want it to be pigmented. This is the brand that can pull that off for you. I mean, this stuff has gotta be the most affordable eyeshadow in Walmart, and it is pigmented, and we're seeing it, and it's having a moment, you know? I got one of their eyeliners. This is the Cole Eyeliner in Nude. 
thinking that it would be a great lower inner rim brightener. In actuality, this is a shimmery nude, okay? You need to know this. If you're buying that thingy, I'm gonna have that brightened lower inner rim. This has a lot of shimmer. It's actually kind of pretty around the innermost corner. Like really shows when you're going around there for brightness but it doesn't make much of a difference at all in your lower inner rim because it has that shimmer. You need to be using like a matte white or a matte cream or peach or whatever in that inner rim. But there we go, we fully encircled and brightened up that tear duct. So that's the only kind of eyeliner I purchased. I probably should try and see if they've got any kind of pins or other things that I might want to use along the lash line. But we're now going to put the focus on this mascara, this long lash lengthening mascara. Guys, this is a tubing mascara. It does not smudge and I actually really like it. It's one of the for sure high points and it was, let's just confirm, was it under $3? Yep, $2.98 again. I don't know why I think things changed as I sat here, but no, $2.98. It really does lengthen. It holds the curl fairly well, and it comes off just in like the little bits. That's what we mean by tubing. Two characteristics of a tubing mascara are that it's incapable of smudging. So it's not gonna smudge on your face throughout the day. And then also you're gonna notice when you go to remove it, it's gonna like practically ball up like little rubbery bits off of your lashes as opposed to smearing down your face, okay? I was very like wowed to see that kind of, I guess, technology in such a low price mascara. But again, it's called Long Lash Lengthening. It has a fairly small brush with a classic spiraled around design, so no rubber bristles here. If you've been looking for a tubing mascara with a traditional brush, that's what this is. But I've curled my lashes and you're gonna see some immediate build here. Let's just not even speed this up for this first coat so you can truly see the speed with which this went on and lengthened out and defined my lashes, did not clump them together. I wasn't expecting, of all things, you know, the mascara to be a standout. May have gotten a little smudge on my eyelid there, but building it up a little bit more, like really good. I wouldn't wait between coats though, because it dries fairly fast. And if you're looking to like, I want more length, I want more length, I want more thickness, just keep on it. Don't switch to the other side yet. Like, look where we're at now. And I wore this on my lower lashes and it truly didn't smudge. Very impressed. This is for sure, for $2.98, this is a run out and grab it category of product right there. You did get a little bit on my eyelid. I am gonna try their matte foundation too, guys. When I'm back in the store again, I'll do a once over of anything I may have missed. Um, <laughs> there may be a part two, because I just find it all really intriguing. Because Revolution, I mean, we know this is a brand that can do affordable, good quality. I'm just personally a little surprised that they're able to keep the price this low. But let's hope it stays there <laughs> instead of starting here and then creeping up in the coming years. Let's hope it stays this way. I predict this stuff is going to be very popular. Just the brand as a whole. Look at these lashes. This is very good for my lashes. I feel like sometimes I need to say that because some people just have huge, amazing natural lashes and they'd be like, uh, what? But when something's really performing on my lashes, now just to show you, I'm going back to this eye and it's basically dry and it doesn't want to build as well. So again, stay with the eye that you're on. Continue building while it's still like a little bit creamy because as it dries, it will lose the ability to build and build and build on itself. Gosh, I felt like I could go for a long time just adding more and more and not getting any kind of funky ends. Like I said, we can go straight to our lower lashes with this very same mascara. It's a tubing mascara. This is better on me for sure than that new Milani one. And you know Milani's charging upwards of $10 for theirs, I'm sure. Mm -mm. Love. When I said at the start of the video there were some things you needed to know about, 
these are the things. We're left thinking, was there anything else for the lip M? You know, not really. Like, I feel like these baby tints were kind of the most colorful appearing thing from what I could see. Now, maybe those squeezy tubes, which I was picturing to be completely transparent lip products, maybe there's more color in those. Those probably require some more investigation. I'm gonna build this up just a bit. There I go, I go back for more. I feel like the lips can look a little more defined at that point. This may not be the perfect partner to my eyeshadow today, but we could adjust that a little bit, right? I could take a little bit of Chase Dreams from Maybelline Superstay, matte ink crayon, just because I, I want to pink this shade up a little bit more. But this is showing you, you know, how you can realistically adjust. The, the baby tints are still a strong product, but I want to see more, more lip stuff. Actually accepted dare. <laughs> I have a couple of berry shades of this that are really close. This lip's gonna wear forever now. <laughs> I'm gonna get just a hair more of my pressed powder up in that zone. But all in all, my friends, I'm impressed. This is a line to look out for. These are products that are very, very fairly priced. What's the hair doing today, Em? I don't know. I had tried to get a lip liner, by the way, and that was priced at $1.98. Oh, and this nude eyeliner was $1.98, too. That was kind of underneath the Lunchables there on my list. But here's the full face. I would say the run out and grab them type of items would be top three blush duos, the baby tint, kind of a fun multitasker. This mascara for sure, like that's probably the thing that really impressed me the most. Close behind that, you know, I, I had some things to say about the super serum in terms of the staying power, but I'm very impressed at the under $5 market, how beautiful that looks. I mean, it's looking great right now, and I think it can really rebound after a touch up, but it just doesn't wear as fresh all day as the L'Oreal does. So it's a little bit under that for me, but that one's like way up here. You know, I love that L'Oreal hyaluronic tinted serum. I wouldn't say we had any glaring fails in this video. We definitely have some good quality, good pigment products that are maybe a little underneath the top spot for me just for my own personal preferences. Like the contour was really good, but like, you know, these aren't the kinds of eyeshadows I'm wanting to grab day after day after day. I would like to see something in this line where it's like, oh, that is a, you know, wet and wild walking on eggshells vibe where that could be a daily use stronghold product for me. Concealers and powders are all right, you know. I would choose Rimmel Stay Matte over those because I am generally looking for a powder to set my under eye area and those do end up looking a little thick there, um, thicker than just a Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder or Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder. And you know, the brow was okay. Honestly, for under $3, can't really complain. This is an exciting time. This is an exciting time for Walmart Beauty. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know of other things that you've seen, that you've tried from this line. I wanna know all the details. I wanna know about anything I left out that I should go back and try next time. Let's all fill each other in. Thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.